you all ready for fraction benchmarks? <laughs> That's today's lesson is fraction benchmarks. Miss Dashforth was feeling adventurous. So, uh, to start with our lesson, we are going to start with an explore. So that means that you get to see if you can figure out what to do. So, um, what you need to do first is you need to color this strip right here to show three tenths. Now make sure that you just color from left to right. Don't do scattered because it'll look confusing then for the next part. Because what you're going to do is look at the fraction benchmarks. So that's zero, one half, and one. And decide if three tenths is closer to zero, one half, or one. So pause the video right now and color in the squares. Okay, so I've got mine colored in. Hopefully you have yours as well. And now what you need to do is decide if this, the end of the blue, is closer to 0, 1 half, and 1. And I think immediately we can eliminate the 1 right now because we know that it is the furthest away from this one right here. Not there because it's in between 0 and a half. So my answer is going to be 0 or it's going to be 1 half. Now let's look at this. Let's see, we've got one, two, three, four lines in between. And so that means that if the color ends at this line or at this line, then it's going to be closer to zero. And if the color ends at this line or at this line, then it's going to be closer to one half. So it ends right here. So that means that one third, I mean not one third, three tenths is closest to the benchmark of one half. Okay, so um, you're going to be pausing again in a second, but let's look at the instructions. So it says, um, estimate if each fraction in the box, here's the box right here, is closer to zero, one half, or one. Um, use the paper strips below to check your estimates. Record your findings in the table on the following page. So if you flip the page, uh, you'll find a table that looks like this. So you'll put the fractions in here. So we can already put three tenths in this because we figured that out and that's one of the fractions in the box. So three tenths is closer to a half. Okay, so there's five more strips, so don't waste one of those strips on three tenths. We already did that one. Now you have to do nine tenths, six tenths, one tenth, seven tenths, and two tenths. Okay, so pause the video right now, color in the fraction strips, and fill in the chart on the other side of the page. All right, so you should have something that looks like this with your fraction strips. So I've written beside, this is nine tenths, then below is six tenths, one tenth, seven tenths and two tenths. So what you may have had to do was write in where half is. We already know that zero is over here and that one hole is if they were all colored in, but we need to find where five is so we can count these, uh, I guess, dotted lines. So this would be one, two, three, four, five. I know that this is, five would be half, because this is a total of 10. So half of 10 is 5. So I don't write 5 here, though. I write 1 half. Okay. So looking at uh, 9 tenths, it is closer to 1. I think we can all agree on that. Uh, half is here again. Okay. And then this one, 6 tenths. Um, so if the color ends at this line or this line, it's going to be closer to 1. And if the color ends at this line or this line, it's going to be closer to half. So that makes 6 tenths closer to half. This one, same thing. These two lines and 1 tenth is closer to 0. 7 tenths may have tricked you. It's these two lines here because we have one, two, three, four in the middle, remember? So the two closest to seven tenths go this way. The two closest to one half go this way. And that means that seven tenths is closer to a half than it is to a whole. And last but last not least, two tenths is closer to 
You're right, zero. So the ones that are closer to zero or closest to zero are one tenth and two tenths. I don't think we had any others, did we? No. Uh, because three tenths is closer to a half, and so is, let's see here, six tenths and seven tenths. And closer to one was nine tenths. Out of those, we might also have eight tenths in in there too. We could just even write it because we probably can figure that out. Because if this is nine right here, that means eight is here. So it would it would go closer to the one. Okay, so this is this is here. The benchmarks that would be um, in the in the box or without. Let me try that again. The box that would have the most fractions in it would be the closer to a half because um, it gets from here to here, right? And then these ones get from there to there. So there's only two that could go in here and two that could go in here other than zero and a whole. And this one could get one, two, three, four, five in total, including a half. Okay, so this is what our lesson is going to be on today. It's, it's seeing if fractions are closer to zero, to a half, or to a whole. And the reason that we do this is um, so that we can understand fractions and the meaning of fractions because they do have a purpose in our lives. Um, all right, so on the other side of the page, right underneath the, uh, the uh, this thing, chart, <laughs> um, we've got a connect. So it says that this number line shows benchmarks, so, or shows the benchmarks, zero, half, or one whole. Zero, half, or one. Okay, so it's just like the fraction strips, but now we have um, number lines to work with. So this is what we'll, what we'll be doing more so this lesson than the strips themselves. Though you could make your own strips if, uh, if, if the number lines are too difficult for you. Um, so the question says, or I guess, I don't know if it's a question, but you can use number lines with the same length to find which benchmark each of four-fifths four tenths and four twentieths is closer to. So we're going to do this together. So we're going to make this one four fifths. We're going to make this one four tenths. And we'll make this one four twentieths. Okay, so let's start up here. So how you do this is you need to break this number line into five equal chunks. Now, uh, it's not going to, we have to, so we have to make lines and we're not going to use this half because only even numbers are going to, to use this half. But basically what you do is you look at the bottom number, the denominator, and you make this many lines on the number line as equally spread out as possible. So that means that one will be about here, two will be about here, three, four, and here's five out of five. So this, this one right here represents one out of five. This represents two out of five. Here's three out of five, or three fifths, and here's four fifths. So notice how the number line just goes zero, and this could technically be zero fifths, and this, well, this one would be five fifths, but see how it goes zero, one, two, three, four, and this is half because that's our benchmark, but these, this is where each one of these would go. So our number right here is four fifths. So that's what we're looking for. Now look at the distance between zero, or between one and four fifths and between half and four fifths. Which line is longer? This one is longer. That means that it's closer with the shorter line. So that means that four-fifths is closest to one whole. Right? If we added one more on top of this, it would equal uh, one whole, right? It would be five over five. So four-fifths is closest to the benchmark of one. Now we need to do ten. Ten, we, well, we don't make ten ticks. 
because this one right here counts as one of those 10. Now, to see what I mean, look up here. We've got one, two, three, four, and the fifth one is the one. Okay, so technically you're going to make nine more ticks. So right here, this is going to be five tenths because half of 10 is five. So we can use this line. Now we need to break up the lines in between zero and a half and a half to one into five sections each, right? Because we need to have um, one, two, three, four, there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and this would be 10 out of 10. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, if we have one over 10, uh, two, three, four, there's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so there's all our, our uh, number line divided up evenly into tenths. And now we're looking for four tenths. So here is four tenths right here. So is four tenths closer to one half or is it closer to zero? We know it's not closest to one. You are correct. It is closest to one half. And the last one. We need to divide this line up into 20s, 20 pieces. So this one right here, 20 can divide by two. It can go in half, that's 10. So this one would be 10 over 20. Now, we know that 20 is double 10. So if we look up here, and if we did a good job with our ticks up here, we can mash these up because this is half of the ticks that we need. And then what we'll do is we'll put ticks in between each one because this is showing 10, but we need twice as many. So if I put one here, 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 and so, oh, whoops, that one's not very good. There. Try to put them in the middle. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the more accurate, the better. Okay, so now over here would be, this would be 1 over 20, 2, this would be 3 over 20, and what we're looking for right here is 4 over 20. So let's not write all of those in, but it would go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 20 ticks, including this one right here. That one's important to remember where it goes. We need to know if 4 20ths is closer to 1 half or 0. So, um, is it closer to here or to there? So, let's count the ticks in between. Just in case if I didn't draw this very well, I could count the ticks in, the, in between. There's 1, 2, 3 ticks in between here. And there's one, two, three, four, five, five ticks in between here. So that means that four twentieths is closer to zero. Okay, and that's what you're going to be doing for most of your um, lesson today, is looking to see if it's closer to a half, to zero, or to one. Okay, now remember that number lines can be divided up in any way. Just look at the denominator. Put that many ticks on the line, including the one hole, and then find the numerator in there, like the four. Okay, so your assignment is it's pretty short. Um, it's page 180, and it's number one to five. And just notice that you'll need a handout for numbers two and five. Um, it just it's a number line. All right.